Welcome back, everyone, to episode number 17 of Bottom to the Top. I am Mr. Cellophane. We've wrapped up our two seasons at Young Reds. The plan is to play out the string in our contract for the next couple of months uh, before we start looking for a job because we don't want to then answer the question in any subsequent job interview, why did you look for jobs while you were already employed? Well, we have interviewed now twice. The first time was a couple episodes ago, as we pointed out. We were offered a job interview right at the turn of the year. We did get another opportunity with KV Kortreich in the Jupiler Pro League. Now, they are in the relegation section of the top tier here in Belgium, but they did give us the chance to interview. However, our interview apparently was unsuccessful. They hired Timothy Simons. And the reason why we're coming back on this is because I take a little bit of offense to this. We managed to finish 10th place with a U23 side in the second tier that we we'd gotten promoted, obviously, the year before. We managed a 10th place finish. So mid-table for us. Timothy Simons was in charge of a team that just got relegated out of the Challenger Pro League into the Ursula Nationals Amateur, going from Tier 2 to Tier 3 three with Dender EH, but they gave him the job. Really, FM? Really? You may be asking yourself, why am I so concerned about how it looks? It has been my experience with FM, and we ran into this a little bit with last year's journeyman, as well as other saves that I played in FM 23, that if the interview gets bogged down in the negatives of things that we can avoid, such as why are you applying for jobs while you still are currently employed? Anything we can do to remove one of those obstacles will just lead us to moving on and getting that bigger and better deal much faster. Okay, I do have to admit I feel a little guilty about this. We've now turned down Young Reds three times to renew our contract hopefully making that clear that it is our intention to just leave when we are done in just a couple of weeks. We've interviewed for a couple of jobs, only ones that have come to us, including SK Beverin, who finished just ahead of us in the table in eighth place in the division we are currently in. So, of course, taking the opportunity to maybe stay in Belgium. But on a lark, we asked the board if they'd pay for another coaching badge, and they said yes. So we are studying for our Continental Seat License on Young Reds' dime, and uh, no, we're still not staying. Okay, now I'm officially insulted. See, we're making 4,300 euros a week currently in our contract with Young Reds, which does expire in about eight days. They have, for the fourth time, offered us a new deal. Now, each time before, they offered us 3,900, which is what they had offered us previously. We had just negotiated it up to 43. Now they're offering me three grand, three grand to stay with your team that I can go nowhere with, that you're not going to sign new players for to improve and give us a better chance of finishing higher than 10th. No, thank you. And with one day left on the existing deal, they tried again. Sorry. Nope. Oh, did I say one more time? Nope. Here they come again. 2700 a week. They keep offering me less money. Do they really think I'm going to stay now? And especially after another news item popped up, with great disappointment, the board has made the harsh decision to relinquish professional status and operate as a semi-professional organization in order to secure the club's future. We lost a crap ton of money. Not exactly sure how, because we weren't really spending anything at least in theory, uh, but now we are definitely out of here. It's the 30th of June. Our contract ends today. Where will we end up? Only the football gods know. Well, it's done. It's the 1st of July, and FM, even when your contract expires, doesn't actually release you from the team, so we officially resigned first thing this morning 64 games managed with young reds we won 42 percent of them only lost 32 which meant draws for the remaining 26 percent so we drew almost as many games as we lost not so bad we did win the first amateur division manager of the year that was for our very first season back in 2024 managed to finish 
mid-table in the Challenger Pro League, which is the second tier of Belgium, if you haven't been paying attention to the series so far. So now we start looking for our new gig. And as you can see, there are quite a number of jobs available for us to choose from. So we may need to narrow cast our view a little bit. Now, we definitely want to make sure that we are taking a position that is befitting our experience and our reputation. And it does not appear that we are going to be returning to Belgium right away. And the reason for that is there are four jobs available in country. All of them are U23 sides. We're going to forget about Young Red. So there are really three jobs available. OHL U23, I think that speaks for itself. Young Ghent uh, is the youth team for Ghent and RSCA Futures, part of company with their coach. They are in the Challenger Pro League. Uh, we played against them last year. They are the RSC Anderlecht U23 team. So where do we want to go? A couple of jobs available in the top league in Argentina. There are a couple of jobs available in Austria, some in Brazil, although many of them are in Series C, which might be just a little bit below where we are looking to be right now. Czechia has a few jobs available, as does Denmark. Uh, some in England. MK Dons. Really the only job that is befitting us right now, as you see, most of the positions available are in the Vanarama National League North or South, which is well beyond reputation-wise, well below where we are right now. Uh, there's a job in the Dritte Liga in Germany, some in Greece. If you may remember, our head coach is a Greek national, so maybe taking the journey through his home country may not be such a bad idea some positions available in italy one in mexico some in northern ireland but i'm not sure if the level of play in that particular league is going to uh, be great for us there's poland there's portugal lots and lots of choices we're going to investigate them all we're going to apply for as many as we see fit because it's fine and we will get that job that basically or that interview question that is like why are you applying for so many jobs well it's because we're trying to explore all of our options we're not just going to apply for one job at a time that's foolish and time consuming and we may miss out on the opportunity of a lifetime our next chance is just around the corner let's see what lies around the bend shall we so we've applied for about three dozen jobs all across Europe in varying countries, decided to stay away from Asia, Africa, South America, and well, frankly, even North America for right now, and making sure that we're only applying for jobs that will fit our current stature. It took less than an hour for two job interviews to pop up in our inbox. First, there's Vitko Visa, which is a team out of Czechia, and Stad Nione in Switzerland. Let's see what happens. Interviews are all done. Mostly got the same questions about learning the language. I mean, we're fairly adept. It took us less than two years to become fluent in Dutch. I think we can do that wherever we go. We also asked them to take a chance on us because we have obviously never managed in those countries. Did still get the questions about the backroom support, which is a little surprising to me because I felt like in our time at Young Reds, we had a very good rapport with the team. Yes, we started off a little on the rough side because we were brand spanking new. But at the end there, there was nobody who opposed us. Not everyone supported us, but the majority of the players did. So to get those kind of questions is a little bit off-putting. And since we are studying for our next coaching badge, we haven't had to ask for any of that. Let's see if we get any more interviews. I'm not sure I'm sold on either position. Honestly, probably leaning a little more toward Czechia than... Switzerland, just because Stade Nione is a semi-professional club, and I don't know if we want to take that kind of step backwards in the resources we'll have available to us, but who knows? Well, ask and ye shall receive. One day has passed. Five more job interviews. Czechia, Switzerland, Turkey, and Serbia. Luckily, we renewed our passport before we got this process underway.
Nine interviews so far in the last three days. We've also applied for a couple of new jobs in Austria and Czechia as well. Even one in Italy. And we've had a couple of interviews in Spain as well. So another country under our belt. Vic Visa has come back and asked us about making any changes to the backroom staff, which usually means that they are probably going to offer us the job. So we are going to comb through that and uh, we'll see what happens. Do we take it right away? I mean, it is Czechia. It's the second tier, I believe, in Czechia. It will still be a step up for us. We've got a lot to think about coming up in the next uh, few days here in game. Well, none of our former staff at Young Reds would want to come with us if he we went to Vitkovisa. They feel like it's either a step down or are just not interested in leaving their job. So it doesn't matter that we had 187,000 euros to spend on compensation for staff. Nobody wants to come. And it could be because the youth recruitment and junior coaching are pretty poor. That said, we're not letting up on our search. Three more offers for a job interview. It's only July 5th, by the way. We've technically been unemployed for less than a week. And two other clubs are asking us for whatever changes we would potentially make to our back room. So multiple job offers incoming. Well, that didn't take long. Young Reds of today confirmed the appointment of Nouradine Mukrim. As the club's new manager, 59 years old, out of Morocco, was most recently coaching the U23 side for Union SG. So this is the kind of job that he wanted, but took them less than a week to replace me. I mean, we're favored personnel and everything. But we really can't worry about that because we have one, two, three job offers, plus a fourth club asking us about making backroom staff changes. So choices. Stadny and A is not one of them. Our interview was unsuccessful. They brought Londono back to the club, apparently. And the club that's asking us to propose those changes is Kasimpasa AS of the Sportoto Super League in Turkey. Now, I normally wouldn't get so excited about going to potentially manage in Turkey, but right now, according to FM, this is the league with the ninth highest reputation in all of Europe. So we've already been offered positions. Uh, I think we're going to have to defer those and see what happens here because this could be the biggest step up of our career and could be a nice financial payday for us as well. And you know that we are not all about the money but I mean if we are going to move from one end of Europe to the other then we might as well get paid for it right we've submitted our proposed changes to Kasim Pasha nobody coming with us our assistant manager Farun was just a little bit too expensive for the budget that we were given uh, however we have also asked for delays from Neuchatel Zamax as well as Vitkovici. Velasim also approached us from Czechia, but as you see, they only offered us 240 euros per week, which is quite the wage cut. So we are going to actually say thank you, but no thank you. We have at least three other options, I believe, on the table, one of which I think is going to be a really great move for us. Well, four more job interviews have been offered, as has two more jobs. One, bit intriguing, a chance to manage in the lower tiers of Spain at Cueta, although some financial damage would need to be undone. But the job we have been waiting for has come through. Kas and Pasha have offered us the job. Now, it's not the money that we thought we would be getting. Transfer budget's not a ton. It's 650000 a 65000 wage bill also not spectacular for the league. In fact, right now the team is actually spending above that wage budget. So changes will need to be made. The season is going to be getting underway in just a couple of weeks. Let's see if we can negotiate the money a little bit. But frankly, the opportunity with two years of experience to manage in one of the top 10 leagues in Europe, we just really can't turn that down now, can we?
So as we pop in, a quick review of what they're expecting from us. They want us to work within the wage budget. Again, something that may be a little bit more challenging right off the bat because the team is spending more than uh, we currently have budgeted. One-year contracts maximum for players over 33. Two years maximum for 31 and older. They want us to finish mid-table in the Super League while working towards repairing the club's financial damage, which they want us to repair by the following year. Uh, hopefully we can get that done by the end of this first year because we want to be as fiscally responsible as humanly possible while we record a top half finish and then just remain in the top half for the rest of our time with the club. They're offering us two years for 2,500 euros a week with a 35% wage drop if we get relegated. So we're going to actually bump that up to 45%. And the reason why we're bumping that up to 45% is because we don't expect to be relegated. And hopefully that means they'll be a little bit more forgiving as we ask for more money. Now we're currently making 4,300 a week. Obviously, no matter where we were going to go based on the job offers we received, we were not going to be making the same amount. Apparently, Royal Antwerp FC, we're rolling in the dough or at least enough to be able to pay us a living wage. Can we get 3500 for two years? No, but they have come up to 2800 So there is wiggle room is what I'm hearing. So 3300 2800 Um. Three grand, 2800 and it's turned orange. So it looks like we have run out of our wiggle room. So two years at 2800 that works for me. So one week after officially stepping down from our position as head coach of Young Reds, also known as the Royal Antwerp FC U23s, we are named the new manager, gaffer, Top man at Kasim Pasha, who have today confirmed the appointment of Nick Bottom as their club's new manager. Eyebrows have been raised in the world of football at the appointment of the 33-year-old, who has recently spent time away from club football just a week. And he is sure to face plenty of questions when he faces the media for the first time at Recep Tayyip Erdogan Stadiumu. Stadiumu at the stadium. Bottom was named Belgian first amateur division manager of the year in 2023-24 and will now be afforded the chance to enhance his reputation by bringing success to his new club. He replaces previous manager Kamal Ojdesh. Bottom rejected the offers from Edi Kweta FC, MFK Vitgavisa, and Neuchatel Zamax FCS. Bottom has wasted little time overhauling the club's backroom support team, with Osger Oshkal, Mehmet Ender Orench, a bunch of other guys moving into new roles. I basically moved some guys around. I moved some people out, uh, guys who were working for maybe our U19 side that were a little better suited for the main club. I moved them in. Uh, so a couple of guys have exited as part of my sweeping and comprehensive changes. So we're dealing with uh, Mehmet Fatih Sarash, who is our chairperson. So Mehmet is formally welcoming us to Kasim Pasha to get me acquainted with my new surroundings. I've received an introductory welcome pack uh, before going on the finalized division and objectives uh, we are to proceed together with. So congratulations to us. Welcome aboard. We have no director of football. We do have an assistant manager in Serkan Demir. The club's been around since 1921, yet... No fierce rivals. Came in 12th last season, the media predicting us to be 11th. So a history of mid-table finishes. We play at Recep Tayyip Erdogan Stadium. It's uh, got a capacity of 13,856, built back in 2005. We have excellent training facilities and great youth facilities. Our youth recruitment, though, stinks. 650 grand to work with in the transfer budget. 65,340 in the wage budget. The best spell of success came in the 2010s, uh, now enduring a 19-year barren spell. We have not won a competition since 2006. Uh, we still have a history of which we are justly uh, proud. We won the Turkish third tier in 1989, 1997, and 2006. Finished runner-up once and won the Turkish fourth tier for the only time in 2005. So back-to-back -back promotions in 05 
and 06. We find ourselves in the top tier now. Uh, we also enter the third round of the Turkish Cup. I'm going to just call it the Turkish Cup. I'm not even going to try to pronounce what that says. And based on the best 11, they play a five at the back, a 5-3-2, which we uh, know pretty well. So maybe we revisit this. We'll take a look uh, at the squad in more depth in just a little while. But we have no current transfer obligations, no current loan obligations. We're basically starting with the squad that is under contract and a clean slate. And luckily for us, no heavy expectations from the supporters. They want us to strive to make progress on and off the pitch, whatever that means, and also finish mid-table, just like the board does. So easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And while we don't have any transfer obligations in, there is a deal in progress to send a player out, a 22-year-old defensive midfielder, Aguzan Yilmaz. Two contracts have been accepted, or at least two offers have been accepted for absolutely zero money. He does have a value of around 600 grand. And frankly, if we're going to sell players, we need the money. So we are canceling all of these deals. All of these deals. And we may have a bit of a steep climb ahead of us. While we have nearly 253,000 social media followers, we have 577 season ticket holders. And for a top-tier team, that isn't great. And taking our first look at the squad, now we will obviously evaluate them much more in depth during our preseason. We still have about six weeks before the regular campaign gets underway. But taking a very quick look, we immediately see that we are incredibly strong at the defensive midfielder positions. We definitely want to make sure that we are utilizing that as Dries Siddiqui, four stars of current ability. He's got some speed on him. Stamina is fantastic. He's a decently strong player who's very defensively solid. Uh, Iran Gomez, not a bad place to have a backup as well. Uh, he can play basically any of the midfield positions, including the wings, should we decide to utilize them. Again, six foot, 171 pounds, decent strength, decent stamina, decent pace, very good first touch. His passing is pretty good as well. Good off the ball and decision making, a very solid all around player. So I kind of like the fact that the system that is being suggested to us would make use of the talents of these two gentlemen. Of course, when you are playing five at the back, your wing backs are just as important. Mortada Ben Juanes is a really, really good left back. He can even play on the right wing if we absolutely needed him to. Decent pace, decent stamina, six feet tall. Wish his uh, jumping reach was a little bit better, but a great first touch. He's good dribbling with the ball. He can cross it. He can take corners. His technique is very solid. Not a bad place to be. He is 31 years old. Might have some value to him if we decide to potentially upgrade the position. Although uh, his backup in Harris Hajradinovic is also decently good. Not as tall, not as strong. Would be a little bit more susceptible on the back post. He's also 31. He also has value. One of these two players could go to fund the rest of our team. Very similar style player on the right-hand side, Kenneth Omero out of Nigeria. A little bit faster, a little bit stronger. Love the fitness, love the balance. Not as good on the ball, but defensively solid. Can also play in the central defense position, standing at six foot one, 176 pounds can get in the air a little bit more than the other guys and deemed not for sale but also 31 seems to be a pattern now the one challenge i think i'm starting to find with using a five at the back system is we don't really have a ton of options at the center back position guys that are not destined to play in other places sadiq sift pinar now, he's, his mentals are very good. He's determined. He's got great work rate. He's aggressive. He's brave. He's six foot tall, 171 pounds. He can get in the air. He can head the ball. He's also 32 years old. But on a wage of 2200 a week, maybe that's not so bad because 
it could lead us to uh, maybe save in other positions if we're only spending so little at the center back position. But as you can see on the right hand side, not a lot of depth considering one of those four is Kenneth Ameru, who we were just talking about as our right back. But that may not actually be something we need to worry about because Claudio Wink out of Brazil, 31 years old. Again, lots of 31-year-olds on this side. So we are going to need to look to get younger as we go through this season and the summer transfer window following. Uh, but he is very serviceable as a right back. Much better with the ball than any of the other guys that we were talking about. Still a decent amount of pace, six foot one, so... Very large back line, I predict, for this side, which is not a bad thing. We're also quite solid at the goalkeeper position. Our number one coming into the season is most likely going to be Moritz Nicholas out of Germany. The 27-year-old is six foot four, and well, he's a goalkeeper at six foot four. What really is there to say? Decent at one-on-ones. His aerial reach is very good. He can jump like you wouldn't believe good reflexes as well i think he's gonna be very solid and a position that hopefully we don't need to upgrade right now because his backup is going to be ali emery yanar we are required uh by league rule to have at least one goalkeeper of turkish descent and this is our guy six foot three i mean he's Decent all around, but just just a shade under Nicholas in basically every category. So I'm okay with him being on the bench for the year. Is he going to be the one that we rely on moving forward? I hope not. Turning our attention into our midfield, uh, we've already talked about Hajran Dinovich and Ben Juanes. So we move to our depth, uh, and this is not a bad place to start. Yusuf Insi, a 20-year-old Turkish national, pretty decent all around. I wish he had a little bit more pace on him, but you know, speed isn't necessarily something that we need in the midfield, especially if we're not going to be using him in uh, like a box to box type role where he's got to get up and back too much. But he is solid, if not spectacular, and at 3,100 a week, fairly affordable, and there is still upside. Honestly, this is a player that's more suited for a box-to-box -box type role. 2700 a week for the 22-year-old Turkish and German dual national Ali Demerol. Now, he doesn't naturally play the midfield position. He has been more of an attacking player coming in. Perhaps we can retrain him because he is just very solid, very well balanced all around. Now, again, we're going to have to look at our options uh, for beefing up our center back core if we do want to go with that three at the back and the wing back. So as we take a look at our options on the wing, they're honestly a little thin. Mamadou Fall uh, out of Senegal. He did cap once for his national team. He He's okay, but he's got no speed, and we really do want speed on the outside. Ali Demerel, we've already talked about him. Franco Lobos has the speed. He can trivially can't really cross though so maybe you'd have to play as more of an inside type forward where it's not as important also five foot eleven not too bad but definitely a area that we could use a little bit of improvement because after that our other option is Suleiman Gunish who is just unspectacular and as we quickly whittle things down to our attacking positions, we have a number of options at striker that we have already talked about. None of them spectacular. Haj Radinovic is probably our best bet. Maybe Ali Demerel as well. Got a ton of guys who are very young who could potentially step up into that position as the years come on, including 16-year-old Mustafa Demirsi. Tons of potential on this kid. Already pretty good with the finishing. Needs to work a little bit on the first touch. The pace is okay. It's six foot two. Uh, makes him a very enticing prospect up front. And the same can be said of Atinch Arikan, another 16 year old coming up through the system. Pretty good on the finishing. He's quick, a little bit shorter, of course, at five foot nine. Hopefully, he grows a little bit into his frame, but we're going to keep an eye on him as we move toward the future. 
So very excited to get things started. We're going to settle on a tactical direction, see how things go in the preseason as we get ready to start off the new year. And I'm sure we don't have anything to worry about. We just open up against uh, Fenerbahce away. No problem. Please make sure you hit the like button. Also subscribe, turn on your notifications so you know when the next episode of Bottom to the Top is coming to YouTube as we look to get Things started in the Sport Toto Super League. We're in Turkey, baby, a top 10 league in just our third year of this journeyman safe. I hope to see you then. Thank you so very much for joining me. I'll see you next time. Until then, bye bar. <laughs>